Howdy, you. Howdy do. Welcome to the ICOF Art Podcast, The Fart Pod. We're back for another episode. We're talking about art. Art and farting. That's it. That's all I got. And today, we're going to kind of evolve from our last topic of call for artists. In that episode, episode 8, I talked about applying to artist calls, and I mentioned working for free, briefly, investing your time to further your career in art or your craft, however you want to see it, and it's kind of a taboo. Should you work for free? A lot of people say you shouldn't, and to some extent I do agree, because we need to value ourselves as artists. We need to understand what our time is worth, and we need to understand the amount of time we have already put into our talents, into our craft and our skills, and what we have done in the past to build our skills now, and then on top of that, to give time for free? It's uh, it's usually a no-no, and I agree with that, but in this episode, I'm going to talk about the justifications behind doing free work, working for free. Why? You should, when you should, and understanding that dynamic. So let's get into it. Should you work for free as an artist? As a beginner, I say yes. And I believe that that answer will change as your career grows. But even seasoned professional artists might find the need to work for free at some point along the line. Could be beneficial, depends on the project. I think the key here is knowing your self-worth, knowing your value as an artist, understanding the value of your time and talent, and that these are your most important assets. But especially if you're going to do mural work or any public art, doing free work might even be essential to starting your career. And to be honest, it's not even free work because murals a lot of times, large scale, require a lot of materials. So you're honestly paying to do work for somebody else. But it's kind of a mindset shift that we have to make. You're actually doing the work for yourself at the beginning of your career. It's an investment. It's marketing. The first big reason why you should consider doing work for free is the experience. Now this gets a little bit dicey. But stay with me. If you focus on the experience and you're doing work for quote unquote free and you're doing it for the experience, eventually you're going to put in enough time, enough hours that you're going to become adequate at what you're doing in order to charge for it in a rate that matches your value and your skills. And when you're doing free work at the beginning of your career, I'm just going to keep using the, the example of murals because that's what I do. Hopefully you can apply it to whatever you do if you do sculpture, um, installation work, whatever. When you're doing it for free, there's less pressure. So you're able to learn the process without a ton of pressure to be perfect. So if the client is not paying you, they might be a little more lenient if you make a mistake, which you're going to do. And it's better to make the mistakes at the free gigs when there's less pressure than when you're doing a high profile job later on, right? Less stakes, if you will. You're also able to overcome creative challenges that would otherwise be impossible to predict or understand at a time. There are simply things that you won't be prepared for. Obstacles on site, such as a big pole in the middle of the wall, um, uneven ground. So this kind of experience on site will help you understand the actual value of each individual project, and you will just get an arsenal of these creative challenges that you can kind of account for whenever you do start charging for your work. And also the experience will build confidence for you. You won't have to fake it until you make it, You will simply be it, and that will pay dividends, especially when you're charging for work later down the road. You'll just have a better understanding, and you'll be able to have a confidence when asking for money, because you'll be like, I've been there, done that. I know, it's not a shot in the dark. Number two, big reason why you should consider working for free, and this might be, it's not the biggest. They all have their own weight, but this one is particularly important that we touched on last episode 
episode when talking about call to artists, and it's the portfolio. It's really hard to get mural work or any sort of public large-scale work by a commission, especially when applying to calls if you don't have a portfolio. You gotta have previous work samples when applying to almost anything. So portfolio is huge. It's how you attract paying clients. So it's gonna be much easier to apply to these calls and to land the big gigs. You gotta have that portfolio. So you might have to do some free walls. You might have to do some free murals. You might have to pay money for supplies on your own dime and make that investment for your portfolio's sake. The money's gonna come back around. Don't worry about that right now. You gotta build your career and you gotta build a foundation and that foundation is your portfolio. Another reason to work for free is networking. When you're doing projects, whether or not you're getting paid, there's a benefit socially and on the business side of things. You are gonna be engaging with your community. You're gonna be rubbing elbows with influential people in your community and people that are in cahoots with the art world. And when you do projects, without worrying about getting paid, it will put you in connection with these people. And I have found that one thing kind of leads to another. Once you do one project, it usually will lead to another. Not always, but it's a possibility and that's a good investment and it's something to consider. You know, it's another form of getting paid. Another big reason, and actually this might be one of the biggest reasons because it is valid for an artist at any stage of their career, and that is if it's a project you're passionate about, money might not matter because free work can be freeing. And since it's not about the paycheck and you're focused on doing a project just because you're passionate about it, whether it's just a really awesome wall, really awesome space, for a community that you're involved with, space that you that is special to you, that you frequent, and you would enjoy seeing your art there. Um, maybe it's a, a for an organization, a charity that you just want to volunteer for because you're passionate about what they do and you know that your work will support that mission. When you're not worried about trading your time for money, there's something kind of interesting that happens that you're just actually going to end up giving it your all. You're going to try harder to make it really good because it's not a transfer. You're just doing it because you're really into the project personally. And I think this will lead to a lot of personal growth. It will develop your style in an interesting way. Maybe other projects wouldn't allow for that. And it just feels good to volunteer, to provide a service for an organization that you feel really good about, that you care for. Honestly, sometimes that can lead to your best work. Even experienced artists can benefit from this, even actually more so. This actually might be more of a reason to, to donate your services when you are financially secure and when you do have a career behind you and already established, um, this might be a good move for you. So if you're an experienced artist, you're just listening for the fun of this, you like to hear my voice, something to consider switching it up, doing a passion project to continue your craft, to maybe do a little experimentation and just provide good work. I think that the muses behind our creativity that inspire us really show up in this format. Just a theory, I'm not a scientist. An example of this is I was asked to donate a mural for Big Brothers Big Sisters, an organization that pairs a an established human being with an underprivileged youth and they have an auction every year and they'll auction off goodies and services from around the community to benefit this organization as a nonprofit. And they asked me to paint a mural or just to donate my service as a muralist. And a guy purchased this. The man's name was Mike. He's an influential business leader in the community in Kansas City. And he just wanted me to paint a mural in his loft, his kind of industrial loft in the West Bottoms. And he kind of gave me the freedom to do whatever I want. And it wasn't even a public piece. It was just for him in his home dwelling. Uh, but he gave me the freedom to do what I wanted. 
And that freedom, I, I, I didn't think of it as painting for Mike. I thought about it as painting for this community. There was a purpose that was bigger than myself, my business. It was bigger than Mike's home dwelling decor. And, and it ended up being a really cool piece. And it's something that I use as a marquee in my portfolio. In fact, if you go to icoff.com, my website, it's the first image on my home screen. And I use that work in almost everything I apply to. So it's kind of weird. It's like, um, it's an intangible value that I can't really describe. Maybe I just got lucky. Maybe it's not related to the fact that it was a quote unquote passion project or volunteer work, but it's not not that. So something to be said about the freedom in that volunteer work. And you know what? It led to other projects. I've gotten a couple different leads from that project, just friends of Mike's. It led to another mural that was public on his building on the rooftop and you can see that mural from highway 635 so that's pretty cool i i think that's a special piece i also did that one for free but that was for me baby did it on my birthday anyway um he also tipped me a couple hundred bucks so it wasn't even free i did get paid technically for my time if you will not necessarily my rate but it was you know a little something paid for groceries Another situation where you might paint for free, doing free artwork, is collaboration. Collaboration is fun. It's just a fun experience to jam with other artists. Typically, I like to work with myself and just get into my own zone, my own vibe, and have total control. But there's something about collaborating with other artists. It just opens your mind to new techniques, new styles, New processes. Magic happens when you combine creative energies. Plus, there's more exposure to each other's audience, so it broadens your audience, hopefully. Honestly, collaborating evolves your own style. It gives you a deeper understanding of your own work and your process, how you work. You're kind of forced to communicate more and therefore your communication skills as an artist get boosted. You get some good practice talking about and explaining your technique and your style and your motivations and your inspiration and your approach to doing work, to doing something creative. And that's invaluable as well. The best example of collaboration and situations where you would be painting for free is the festival atmosphere, mural festivals in particular. I don't know if this applies to many other mediums, but as a muralist, as a painter, mural festivals are really fun. Some of my best work has come from mural festivals. And I think it's because there's just a magic in the air. There's creativity surrounding the whole event. There's just so many creative people in a small geographical area creating at the same time. And I believe that art is energy work. Creativity is an energetic process. And that creativity is contagious. When there's all these other artists around, there's something magical that happens. I can't explain it. It's inspirational. It's motivational. Whether it's to impress them or just to get out what you put in. You know, you're creating your best work because you know there's other artists that are around and you just want to carry your weight for the festival, if that makes sense. And I think it brings the best work out of you because you're just painting for something bigger than yourself, for the event. I have found that to be the case. For sure. There's a lot of work in my portfolio that is from festivals, probably half. And, you know, this comes with a drawback for sure. Festivals are not always absolutely benevolent. You can't always do them. The best ones do provide an artist stipend or at least pay for paint or lodging if you're traveling. Other travel costs, those are the best because um, a lot of times for festivals you are traveling, so it's another one of those things where it's not even free, you're actually paying to do them. And, you know, you just kind of have to balance that out. You have to find the balance and see when it works for you and when it doesn't. Um, I'm not always willing to do them. And beyond the cost of completing these projects, another downside is it takes walls away from local artists. So if you're doing a mural festival in your own town, 
for example, you're basically painting for free or at least significantly cheaper than you would if you were contracted or commissioned to paint that same wall. And if there's always festivals going around in your town that you work out of, then what's to say that building owner won't just wait until the festival to get a free wall. You know what I'm saying? You go and ask them, hey, can I paint your wall? Here's my price. You try and hustle for gigs in your area, but they're just like, no, I'll just wait till the festival comes around because I can get that wall for free, baby. So that's a downside. And when you're traveling and going to other cities and participating in festivals, you know, you might be taking away gigs from local artists that could otherwise be getting paid. And my third and final reason that you might pay for free, and this one's uh, particularly taboo, and that is bartering. This isn't always recommended. In fact, the only time I would suggest that you would trade your art for something other than money, whether it's a service or other goods, as if it directly aligns with your lifestyle. And it's something that you would be spending money on anyway. And now this also gets a little hairy because you don't need more excuses to drink more beer. You know what I'm saying? There's a saying in the art world that beer doesn't pay my bills. You know, we're artists, we're professionals. If this is gonna be your job, you do have to make money. And this goes for everything I've mentioned up to this point. You know, people are going to offer you beer for your services. Beer doesn't pay the bills. And, you know, that's not particularly, I'm not hating on drinkers. I don't drink anymore, but I did at some point and I was a little more willing to, to trade that for my services. But, you know, you're not painting your friend's house. This is something you got to take seriously and... Beer is not exactly good for your health, so you're you're foregoing money, you're basically donating your time for something that's probably not even good for you in the end. But a situation where bartering could be helpful and might be beneficial is my example right now. I'm actually in the middle of a barter exchange. It's a unique one. I did a mural for a local chiropractor, Dr. Derek, Dr. Marin, shout out, what's up? They paid me to do a mural and then gave me some free chiropractic care on top of that. Now, chiropractic care is not something that I think is essential in my life, but I have found benefit from it. So they approached me and they asked me if I would be interested in trading art for chiropractic care. They have this whole deep dive package where I'm doing um, four Actually, it's been more. It's been like six weeks of chiropractic adjustments a couple times a week. He's really giving me intense focus and care, Dr. Derek is. And then Dr. Marin is going to do some work and some evaluations, doing some almost brain scan work, some neuro therapy, which I think is going to benefit my creativity in the short term and in the long term, hopefully. And I'm going to provide them with a few custom commission paintings that they can put in their office space and maybe one for their home as well. So it's a really good trade. Both of us are excited about it. It's totally mutually beneficial. So this would be a situation where you might consider a trade for your work. Another example of how I've bartered art for something that I would have otherwise spent money on is travels. So we just did a three-month tour of Ecuador, my girlfriend Amanda and I. Half of the places we stayed, we were able to negotiate a free mural for free lodging. And now it didn't totally equate to my value. I probably came up with the short end of the stick on some of these jobs, but it made traveling way cheaper and it was is something we were going to do anyway. So being able to travel abroad for much cheaper by doing something that I enjoy doing, painting murals. You know, I wasn't in a situation where I was going to be making money when I was traveling. It was kind of a small sabbatical anyway. So being able to cut costs in that was super beneficial. And, you know, I recommend that. I recommend if you're somebody that likes traveling and art, it's a good way to make traveling way more affordable because lodging is just one of the most expensive parts about travel. And some of those gigs, we also got free food too. 
and food is another expense in traveling. So now that I've given you some solid reasons why you should consider doing art for free, there are some things to consider and there is balance and nuance to all of these strategies. I think there's some important things to understand, although I am advocating doing free work and a lot of professional artists wouldn't advocate that, it is taboo. The things to consider are what's gonna make the difference. And probably the most important thing is in the approach to doing work, you need to understand whose idea is it. There's gonna be some clients and some people trying to commission you that are going to suggest that you give them free work. They're gonna use terms like exposure. And this is a very naughty word in the art world, exposure bucks. Exposure bucks don't pay the bills. Exposure is valuable to an artist, especially a public artist like a muralist. But you just got to be careful about it. If it's their suggestion versus if you think the exposure is going to benefit you, if it's going to be in line with your business strategy. Be careful when clients approach you and they try and make you feel guilty like, oh, I'm on a budget, I want your art, but I'm on a budget. It's like, bitch, I'm on a budget too. I gotta pay my bills, this is my job. And how dare you assume that you deserve my work for free? You know, that's a lot of gumption for someone to think that they deserve your work for free. So be careful about that, it's very important. So you need to understand this balance and it's important to regularly self-evaluate your worth, your value. Constantly be checking yourself throughout your career and understand what your time and talent is worth. I think it's important to assess your value in comparison to your market that you're working in. It should be relative. Look at professional artists in your market. Try and figure out what they're charging or at least a ballpark. You can ask them if you want. Um, it's, it's not something that's easy. It's not an easy conversation to have, but some artists will be willing to tell you. And I've had other artists that are emerging ask me what my rate is, and I'm pretty honest as honest as I can be, just to help people out because it's not a competition, right? When I say compare, it's not about competition. I think there's walls for everybody, but we should be helping each other out because it's relevant. Where is your skill level at? How do you measure up skill-wise to other artists in your community, in your market? And it should be relative to that. Don't ask a professional artist that's probably a few years ahead of you what their rate is and then charge that same rate. You know what I mean? It should be relative to your skill level. Also, don't try and just undercut other artists. It's just something to consider. How fast can you paint? That's gonna be something that adds into that value. Something else to consider is when we were talking about like passion projects, um, when to do work for free and something that needs to come into consideration is if the project aligns with your brand. Don't just be doing free projects if it's not something that is in sync with your style or your the context of your work. I like to do nature themed stuff. It's something I'm interested in. It's something I'm passionate about. So if somebody asks me to do work and I'm passionate about the organization, but they're like, do this architectural work. I'm like, I don't like doing architectural work at all. I love architecture. I just don't want to replicate it. It's art in itself. It's redundant. I don't want to paint buildings on a building. You know what I mean? So that's something that like, it, I'm not passionate about it. So make sure it aligns with your brand. Make sure it's not something that compromises your brand. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you get into like branding for other people, if it's marketing for their business, you gotta get paid for that. If you're doing logo work, don't do logo work for free. I don't know, that's kind of a no-no. I want you to think about how much business doing any certain project will bring you. Something to consider. When you're doing free work, will this bring you more work? That's an important question to ask. And another sub-question of this is, is the work public or private? If somebody asks you to do a project and you're considering doing it for free because of whatever reasons that we've listed already, if it's gonna be private in somebody's house, House. No one else is going to see that. This person's an introvert. They don't even have friends over. That's going to be way less benefit to you in the long term than, say, a public mural, especially something in this city where a lot of people are going to see it, a lot of traffic. That would be worthy of more consideration to do that work for free if it's going to be in public. And that's just because it's going to probably lead to more stuff, whereas a private gig, probably not. Now, 
saying that private work does still have value as far as the experience and portfolio work, right? And this is usually relative to how much creative freedom you have in the project, how much creativity the client is going to give you. So the more freedom I say, the more free it would be. You know what I'm saying? If they're going to have all these demands, they want it to be just how they want it. The price is going to be relative to that. You're going to want to charge for that. And like I said, with the brand, depending on how close it resonates and is in sync with your scope of work already, the same goes for that. So in conclusion, I think that getting good, so we're talking about the experience, getting good is more important than getting paid when you're at the beginning of your art career. I would say that it's almost impossible for a muralist to launch their career without doing some sort of free work. And think about it like this, even if you're painting in your studio for yourself and you're not selling that work, that's working for free too. So it's kind of along the same lines. But just because you're not getting paid for something doesn't make it not valuable. You just gotta understand what the value is for you and make your decisions based on that. After everything I've said today, what's most important is that you are assessing your own value and your you're continually reevaluating your worth throughout your career. The question is, when do you start charging after you start your career in art? And I think a good rule of thumb is when you have more work on your schedule than you have time. If the work is piling up, that's when you start charging because there's now competition for your time and people got to pay for that. None of this is black and white. None of this is absolute. Everything is situational. It's ever changing. And, you know, once you start charging for work, that's not absolute. What you charge is going to be fluid and it's going to have ups and downs depending on your schedule, your workflow. If it's a slow season, you might be willing to do something for less money just to give yourself the work and pay for the bills. But what's important is that it is in line with your lifestyle, your welfare, and not on other people's dime or time. It should be relative to your needs. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Alex Eikoff. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching.